I was making an effort for today's intro to do it from an interesting place. So I did it from the road and I thought it went well, but I went to play it back and my shirt was, it didn't look good. It was, it was, trust me, this is better, unfortunately, although less exciting because I had Denver in the background. It looked really cool. But today's show is about internet radios. Yes, for those of you that guessed, good job. For those of you that didn't, it's kind of a random one, so I don't blame you. Now, you may be saying to yourself, wait a minute, internet radio, can't you do all of that with an app? Yes, pretty much, and no. You're going to want to stay tuned to find out exactly what I mean by that. It's been a very interesting journey having this product for the last few days. You're definitely not going to want to miss this. Welcome to Recordology. Okay, and here is the box. It is pretty hefty. It's got some weight to it, which is always a good sign, I think. I would say probably eight or nine inches this way by seven inches, I would guesstimate right about there. Interesting, it is definitely not in retail packaging, so that tells us that this is sort of an online only type of uh, product. That way they don't have to waste money on retail packaging, which is designed to sell the product inside the box. So you stumble upon it at Kohl's or wherever you're shopping, and then you're like, hey, I want to buy this. That's how that works. So, and you may be saying to yourself, this seems like the most unnecessary product ever. In fact, my wife was like that, like, don't you have an app that does that? Yes, but everybody out there, you are my people, you get this. We like physical media. We like things that are tangible, but buttons to push, knobs to turn. You know what I mean? So it's taking things out of the instantaneous realm into you know a more tangible and savory existence if that makes any sense okay now there actually is retail packaging here <laughs> so forget everything i just said it just happened to be in another box but here we go awesome this is so cool Twenty-two thousand plus as if that wasn't enough radio stations four preset buttons bluetooth built-in rechargeable battery. Now, actually, that was one feature. I was looking to find one that didn't have that because I just wanted to plug it off the wall, and I'm not sure if the uh, power cord will bypass the battery and, and thereby, you know, not, you know, wear it out, but apparently the battery life is phenomenal on it regardless. There are two color variants, the black on black, which is actually the one that I would have liked to have grabbed, but it was out of stock or it was a third-party deal, uh, would have taken another three, four weeks to get here. So I got the walnut with the white faceplate on the front, which is fine. Wooden housing, wireless technology, 2.4 inch display, rechargeable battery. Yeah, remote control, super, super cool. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now tell me in the comments below if you guys have one of these or if you would like to have one of these. Assuming this isn't a fail, which I hope it's not, I will put a link in the description below to this one anyway. But there are a handful of them out there. This Ocean Digital brand seems to be like the one of the main uh, companies that makes these. There is the uh, pamphlet and I'm definitely gonna hold on to that because this is pretty new to me. And we've got sort of a quick start guide, a couple different models there, just cool stuff. They also, yeah, they make like sort of a hi-fi one to hook up like a component system and a little portables and things of that nature. So a desktop model seemed like the best one for me. There is a little letter and cardboard box. This is very well packed. There's the radio itself. I'm going to set that over there. And we've got a remote control and a uh, micro USB. And then in the bottom of the box, it's another piece of cardboard like that top piece. So let's start with the remote. The remote, I think, is going to have more commands than the front panel itself, so it'll be nice. Yeah, it's a good size remote, actually. Feels as big as an average television remote. And the best part to me so far is the fact that it takes, you know, regular AAA batteries. Those double A's or triple those are triple A's. I do not care for remotes with a button cell as much. And I always say that like it's hard to get button cells, which it used to be. Nowadays you can get them anywhere, but there are all of the commands that you can do, EQ settings, and here is the moment of truth. Moment of truth. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm not going to fumble through this thing 
on camera here. What I'm going to do is after we open it, I'm going to spend a day or so with it and really get to know it and then come back and show you the features. That way I actually know what I'm talking about. I'm so excited for this, you guys. Literally excited for this. I don't get that excited for new tech as much as I probably ought to, but this is one exception. Okay. Okay, they're actually a little bigger than I thought it would be, which is good. It's hard to tell by the photos, but I mean, you know, again, if I had to guess, it's probably six inches. No, it's more like seven, eight inches by probably five inches. And on the back, another big thing was I wanted, had to have line output. I could have made a headphone output work, but I really wanted to be able to connect it to my hi-fi. So having that line out was huge. Obviously we got the power input there, five volts and a headphone out as well. This is a wood veneer and on the bottom, we've got rubberized feet, a nice sort of walnut finish all the way around. And this actually looks really handsome. I, I like the look of it more so than I thought I would. This is a stark white uh, metal grill. I think that's metal. Yeah, it's a metal grill over the speaker. But again, I'm primarily going to be connecting it to my hi-fi. Um, we're going to go ahead and peel off this. I know Tecmon does that slow motion thing. with. <laughs> I don't. That's his thing. Let, let him have his thing, okay? Um, let me have mine. The knobs feel kind of loose actually they don't really have any drag buttons have a decent click yeah okay let's see if uh let's power it up see if we can get anything on the screen or it could be nope it's got charge in it that's good ocean digital sky tune and that's the service where all the stations are so let's see oh i think i can push yeah i can push to, to select configure network okay so yeah let me go ahead and uh, spend some time with this getting it all set up and playing with it and getting used to it and learning it and then i will be back in the next clip here and we'll take a look i want to show you guys some of the other models that they offer this one is very similar to mine but it also has the uh, digital audio broadcast which we do not he have here in the united states as well as fm couple different variants here. There's the component one, which is super cool. And on the back side of this document, there's more. Most internet radios, from what I can tell, are portable variants, which is cool. But I, I do like the fact, this is mine right here. I do like the fact that this is, you know, a tabletop model. This is sort of the next step up. It's got, not only uh, does it have the Wi-Fi, but you can connect a LAN jack to the back, which is really cool. And it has stereo speakers, but the DAB is not something that would work here, but the FM would be a nice touch, I suppose. Although every FM station I can just get over the internet. So yeah, cool stuff. Okay, so I've spent a few days with the device and I'm going to demonstrate its operation in a dark room so we can see that screen better. But I wanted to show you sort of the front panel here. So the heart button will allow you to favorite any station you want, and it stores like a ridiculous amount of favorites. And or, and or, you can pre-select or choose one of the four numbered buttons there to be a favorite station if you just wanna quickly go to one of those. And then the other ones you can access by tapping on the heart and then it's a list. And that's really about it. Entering characters is kind of bizarre because you use the select dial to rotate through the choices, but then instead of pressing down to select the character, you have to press the right button. So a couple of quirks here and there. A lot of folks said it was really a pain to set up on the wireless. I didn't think it was. It took me maybe a minute and a half. Um, if you've ever used like a, a Wii remote to access the internet or a video game system or you know, things of that nature. It won't be completely foreign to you. It doesn't have a QWERTY keyboard on it or anything, but it, it is not that tricky. I mean, if you're somewhat technically minded, you can figure it out. Or if you're setting it up for a relative, like an elderly relative, this is literally a five minute setup tops. But let's go ahead and go in a dark room and take a look at what's on screen and give it a test. Okay, so here we are in a mostly darkened room. Before we get started with this, this is gonna be fun too, but before we get started with this, I am compelled to tell you that uh, my wife thinks that I'm a little obsessed with radios. I have a lot of radios, a lot of portable radios. And uh, this clip from the movie Annie came to mind. You know what? 
What? I love you. <laughs> I know. Kiss me as only you can. Oh, you devil. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I'll let you be the judge of that. We have reviewed a lot of radios. Let's go ahead and power it up. Press and hold the power button, and it comes to life. Ocean Digital. The screen does a good job. I'm sure they are using like a Nokia kind of cell phone screen, and, but it seems to be effective. It does the, a, a good job. I'm filming a backlit you know, display, so this isn't going to look you know, exactly like what I'm seeing. It's a little more contrasty on camera than what it is to my naked eye, but this is decent representation. So navigating the screen, by the way, the whole screen, and I've seen this on other reviews as well, is shifted at just a tad, maybe half a millimeter to the left under the bezel a little bit. If you look at that arrow on the bottom left-hand corner compared to the one in the bottom right-hand corner, it's just a little bit slid under the bezel, but it really doesn't become an issue. So um, I powered it back up. It came to the same state that I left it in before, which is on one of my stations. So this is what you'll usually see. It'll, it'll default to um, the favorite screen. So we've got the nice UK version of favorite. <laughs> and we've got the date. We've got the time, which you can choose 24 hour, 12 hour. The battery indicator, which is fully charged right now. This was about half charged when I got it, and it took a good five hours of charging to top it off. So it's a slow charge, definitely an overnight charge. Um, the upper left-hand corner shows the signal strength as well. So going back to the home screen again, you can use that select knob to rotate through the different settings. It is a Bluetooth speaker. Media Center allows you to have a computer or a server acting as a media server and to access content on there. It's not something I'm gonna do. It does have an alarm clock feature, a sleep timer. The remote control, by the way, has a lot of you know shortcut buttons to doing this. Configuration, it's pretty self-explanatory. And then, like I said, it defaults to the favorite list. But when you wanna go surfing the internet for stations, the way to do it is through this internet radio option. So I'm selecting that and you get basically three choices, history, Skytune and search Skytune. If you go to Skytune, it accesses the server and you can browse by genre, by region, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and browse by region. And it's pretty snappy. I mean, it's really, you know, pretty quick. You can look at different countries. So let's see what Bangladesh has available. And to think, 22,000 stations, I mean, it's just crazy. Now, are you gonna listen to 22,000 stations? Probably not, but who knows? Maybe you'll just, you know, find a few that you'll really, really like. And that's been the case with me so far. So I'm going to pick this station right here. And then we're just going to see what we get. As you can see, it accesses the network, accesses the stations pretty quickly. The buffering is pretty quick. It, I'll turn the volume up in a second. It has an adjustable buffer. So if you want, I think it's two seconds or five seconds. And the reason why you would want to go to five seconds is if there was an interruption, it will basically save five seconds of that audio before you hear it so that if there's an interruption that's you know within five seconds it can stitch it together in real time and you don't get any gaps so let's go ahead and turn this up here english language in this case and by the way i have the mic facing away from the speaker as i often do so we're gonna test out the uh, sound quality on the line out here in a minute so anyway, that's how you navigate to a station, hitting the home button again, going over to internet radio, search Skytune. You can search characters. Now I was gonna tell you how tricky this is. So when you search for something, you have to go in here and select a character. And like I said earlier, instead of clicking to enter, which will make it search, you hit the right arrow and that selects the character. And then you go through this whole, and it's the same process for entering an IP or not an IP address, but for entering in your internet connection and for searching for content as well. I believe there's a way to do it with the computer. The remote helps because you can sort of do that T9 searching thing with the keypad and the three letters that that does speed it up. And then once you, you know, enter the characters for what you want to search, you press the select button again and it will either come up with content or it will say 
there's nothing there, which is the case for what I did. So I've selected a few of my favorites and I just think this is super neat. So we've got BBC World Service. Let's go ahead and turn that on. It's gonna take a second to disconnect from the one stream and connect to the other stream. I also got to thinking about the practicality of this. You essentially can use this anywhere. If your phone is a hotspot, you could literally, you know, have this in the car with your phone on as a hotspot and connect to the Wi-Fi network on your phone if you have that service, which is kind of a bizarre thing. But the, the idea is you have it around your house or your workplace. In my case, it's going to be just kind of background music and, and whatnot while I'm working because, as I said before, I work from home. So here's the BBC World Service. Now, they have every single BBC radio station. This is the world service. They've got music of every genre. You can browse by music genre. Just super, super cool. game plan, which seemed to be to stifle Belgium in the style of their performances when they won the trophy five years ago. Sound quality is good. I mean, it's streaming. So for those of you that don't know, the way streaming works, you will have seen MP3 on there and the bit rate. And it's two channels, so you do get stereo if there is stereo available. And basically what streaming is, is a compressed lossy audio file, like an MP3, uh, although it doesn't have to be. There's other types of streaming audio. And that stream is essentially downloaded and played at the same time. So unlike downloading a digital audio file and then listening to it, you can literally listen as it's downloading. That's essentially what streaming is. So as you listen to a stream like this, it's essentially downloading this content in real time or close to it. It's probably about four or five seconds behind the terrestrial broadcast. And then you're listening to it and then the file is basically being deleted after it's played. So this all happens in real time. Back to this screen here, some other stations that I have selected here. I've got 1940s radio, which you know, I'm going to like that. I love my Glenn Miller, my big band. This one's 48 kilobits, which is pretty, pretty small stream. 22, a little over 22,000 hertz, two channel. But with this kind of music, you can get away with it. Going back to my favorites list, I got a Frank Sinatra station. There's a lot of these exclusively exclusive stations that have, you know, only one artist. So this one is literally, there. that's better, 128K, so that's a lot higher quality. These exclusive stations. So now I've got the line output connected to uh, my bigger speakers. Again, they're not right by the mic, but you'll get an idea in the room. Now, when you plug the line output, it doesn't deactivate the front speaker, so that works in tandem. So you, we can turn off the front speaker and the line output is still working. So I'm gonna turn up my external speakers now. Full of bass, very rich. It's it's great. And if you have tuned your ear, as I have over a period of a long time, because it did take a while, but if you tuned your ear to recognize compression, yeah, it's gonna be present, but you know, what do you expect? It's streaming. I mean, you're you're trading off the convenience of accessing, you know, you're getting twenty-two thousand stations at your disposal through a singular pipeline. So the quality is going to be less than a CD, but at the same time, you're trading off the sound quality for convenience and accessibility. Here's a dedicated Seberg background music station. Really cool. Fun stuff. So yeah, I am you know very happy with this all the way around. I've got no complaints whatsoever. The the knobs do feel a little lightweight, but they they work fine. I have nothing negative to say about it. Really, I like the cabinet. I I like the white design more than I thought I would. It's the perfect size. It's, I was afraid it was gonna be so dinky that it would have been you know just annoyingly small, but it's not. It's the right size, but it's not ridiculously big either. Speaker sound quality is good. And the line output sound quality is even better. Of course, I found a Glenn Miller station in here as well. So these are the the favorites that I found so far. I'm still still searching for more. There's uh, if you go to I think it's skytune.net. Don't quote me on that, but it's either skytune.net or skytune.com. You can search for all of the stations on there, and then you can even enter that station as a number to find it easier. So 
Really, really cool. Very happy with it. Oh yeah, you can dim this display. So if you have this like bedside, which I've had for a couple of nights, you can dim it so it's not so nuclear bright because when it's the only light in the room, it does tend to be, you know, a little bit bright. Let's go ahead and listen to a little sample of Glenn Miller. Super awesome. I love it. I love it. It's just a world of possibilities. I know this is essentially what you can get with the TuneIn app in the iOS store and the Android store. But I think it's more fun. For one thing, I haven't heard any ads yet. And it, last time I listened to TuneIn, I had to listen to five minutes of ads before the stream started. So, oh, yeah, yeah. One more thing before we go I do want to show you is if you are looking for just local radio, go to SkyTune and you can go to local radio there. And it will actually let you browse to your, your state and your city. Let's go here, Colorado and Colorado most popular and it's going to allow us to pick local stations which is so cool so here's a local talk radio station and here we go it's going to become a stopped timeout okay that's the first time I've seen that I don't know what that is so let's try another one let's a local iHeart radio station all right let's try this in real time here and there it is Sounds great. That's a really high bit rate. See, that's AAC. That one's not MP3. AAC is even better than MP3. It's more efficient. Interesting that it's one channel, though. So it's mono, but a higher bit rate. Really, really cool. And, you know, compared to, like, Sirius XM, I find that the sound quality in this is far superior. Sirius XM crams their audio into, like, 80-some-odd kilobits per second streams. I think they're AAC streams. And the highs are so crushed. I think the entire, because they stream the entire channel lineup to your device over Sirius XM at like four megs. So each station is left with mere kilobits of data. Uh, not even, you know, 128, which is what we saw early on the, on the MP3. Um, there's also old time radio on here, talk radio, news. It's just awesome. Awesome. Highly recommended. Definitely we'll put a link in the description below. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for today. I am up here in beautiful Estes Park, Colorado, Lake Estes behind me. And that doesn't even show the whole lake because it goes quite a bit further than what you see. Anyway, I love this device. It was super cool, super fun. But this is, uh, gosh, you can't, look at that. God's creation is just so much more impressive than any gadget, right? This is so cool. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs> My mind is like on what we're doing next, so just having fun. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I think I've said that 30, 38 times now. Uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe if you haven't done it already. But that's going to do it for now. Happy record hunting. We will see you next time.